Background removal is something that's often really, really useful. So you can go from something like this to these kind of images on the bottom. And even getting things like hairs perfectly right can also be really, really useful. So my name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech of the workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. So we're going to cover this, how to do this. Um, it's actually my preferred method is using an app that's outside of PowerPoint. We're going to look at several nuances revolving this thing. Here is stuff that I use for my YouTube thumbnails as most YouTubers use. And I love this feature. I think it's so, so, so important to be a skill to master. Um, and when I show this to people, people absolutely love it. So I am gonna show you the tool a bit later on in the video, but first let's explain what we're trying to do and then go through some other alternative methods as well. So here you go. Here are some examples of ways that I can use it in my YouTube thumbnails. Um, notice that it is sticking up above, so that's not perfect, but it is pretty good for a lot of things. So before we go into background removal for images like this, just to show you that icons can also be really, really useful. So icons are a very clean way that you can have this single color image that can even match your logo perfectly like this. So it's much better to have icons, um, which are vector graphics than these kind of huge, large image files a lot of the times. Um, notice this hasn't got the background removed, whereas this has, but icons are a much cleaner way to go about that. So uh, the good thing about these icons as well is you can kind of select them and you can go to um, take the shape, fill and change it to absolutely anything that you wanted. You can use the eyedropper, which is a great tool to pick up the color from anything elsewhere in your slides. And then it will bring it up like that. I usually like to have a thin outline around my icons so they pop a little bit better. Um, and you can get them from the insert tab and then icons. If you have PowerPoint 2019 or more recent, you have thousands and thousands of icons here. They are searchable, uh, which is really great. And you also have other things like images. These two are the ones I use the most. Um, Cutout people, cartoon people is the newest one. I have a whole video devoted to that. Um, and stock videos I like as well. These are played without sound um, and are really good for PowerPoint. So with images, you also get really, really awesome high definition photos. And there's new ones that come up every month. And yeah, these are really, really great. So you can just kind of click on the things that you want and then you can add them. You can choose between a variety of them and just sort of add them. And they are black by default, the icons, but you can change the color to anything you want depending on what you're looking for. As I said, I usually do a white or a black outline and it makes it pop a little bit better. Um, but yeah, those are the icons for you. If you're not going to use icons, then another alternative is to add kind of a frame around your photos. And there are some built into PowerPoint. And if I show you these in picture format, you have a lot of styles here. Honestly, I think most of these are pretty unprofessional, but there are two that I like. One of them is this one, center shadow rectangle that does this. The other one is a sim simple black frame. Uh, all the other ones I don't think are very good most of the time. And notice that if you have an image like this, even removing the background like we saw in the first slide isn't that great. I would still probably put an outline around it so it doesn't look like it's sticking out of the page. These two work perfectly well just on this slide. And if we go in here, we can see the sensor shadow rectangle. It's not just me. Lots of graphic designers use that, including software engineers. What's this? If I go to picture format and compress pictures or any kind of pop-up dialog box, it actually has that similar effect around it. Um, so, we did talk about um, using the stock photos that are directly within PowerPoint. They are here if you are with Office 2021 or more recent. And what is good is that there's a lot of them that has non-busy parts of your, t of your s picture that are great for making full screen images with some text that you can put in certain components. Now, these are really, really good for that, but they're not always as built in and PowerPoint does have a built in way to remove backgrounds. So this is the output. As you can see, it's not very good to, to get to that. Go to picture format, remove background, it tries to guess for you. Look how it's tried to take out the stalks. Now you can mark areas to keep and remove, but honestly, I find this is not a very good app. Yeah, look, it's not very good. It's not great. So I don't particularly like that. Um, instead, I use this other website that I'll show you in a second. So everyone knows how to use Google. And let's say you're searching for an elephant. And you can go to images. 
but many people have never ever clicked on the tools button. The tools button is absolutely fantastic. The main thing that I love about it is from all these options, you get color and you can choose transparent. And then all of these have transparent backgrounds. If I click on that, I get this checkerboard symbol, which means that if I copy this and I paste it into PowerPoint, it will have no background, which is absolutely fantastic. So those are other things you can do here. Um, you can choose a color if you have a preference. Size to be large, which is great for PowerPoint slides. Um, and then always wait for this to load and look out for the checkerboard symbol when it pops up. Then you have type, you can choose GIF. That's how I get a lot of GIFs. Um, time, uh, if it was un uploaded recently, there, look at that. That's really, really good. High quality photo without a background. And then usage rights, if you want this to be kind of illegal or legal to choose in your, in your PowerPoint slides, you can choose that. I actually use time a lot for news. So I will kind of go to news and here in tools, I will choose past week, past 24 hours. There's even more elaborate ways you can do this. Um, and I have, I have another video where I talk about Google search tricks as well, but here we're talking about images. So here's how to get something with a transparent background. But the final part of this video is what you do if you have something that is not a transparent background and you want to make it a transparent background. So let's go to this website called remove.bg. I absolutely love this one. So here, um, it is free. So you can take something like this one and you can right click and choose copy image and then go back here and you can paste. Control V, that will paste it in. And there you go. And now it's uploaded like this. Now you might think, well, it does look like it's cut off, but if I look at the actual original image, that was blue sky. So it is pretty much taking it per perfectly. You can download it if you want to, or um, if you have a paid account, you can actually do download it uh, at higher quality like that. Um, however, if you do want to edit it, you still can. So here is how it was. You can blur the background or you can add a custom background if you want to, you know, put this guy on a beach like that with cool buildings behind or in the erase restore, you can restore uh, some parts of it. So we can zoom in there, play around with the brush size, and then kind of do it like that. So yeah, there we go. It was kind of a blue background. And I honestly don't like using this very much. And 90% of the time, it will just give me the right one that I want to. So let's give it some other more advanced types that we did. So from our PowerPoint. So here we are in PowerPoint. So I can just take this one and paste it. Let's do a few of them. And let's look at some ones that are much harder as well. So here I have, well, this is already such a blend of an image. Um, this has some, you know, complex hair. This has an elephant whose feet never end because the horizon is very, very similar. Um, these ones, I mean, these ones will do it perfectly. Let's look at how it looks for these ones. So starting at the bottom, Yep, this one, it's done absolutely perfectly. Let me put it side by side with the photo. So look at that, look at from that one to that one, or from this one to this one. Notice it's removed the building at the back, but kept all the buildings down here. Um, there's the car. How great is that? It's just taken everything else out, even when it's a fairly similar color. Um, I haven't done these two, but then I've done these kind of more difficult ones. Now, uh, this elephant, it didn't really know where to end its feet. Remember that you can click edit and restore some stuff. Uh, this one, it's probably done the least good, but it's really hard to get a foreground and a background there. And then, yeah, this one, it's done the hair perfectly well. Now, if I copy an image from PowerPoint, if I press Control V and I'm using Edge or Chrome, it actually doesn't work anymore, which is kind of annoying. Um, you can upload an image or drag and drop it as well using this task. But honestly, I just love the control V. So what I worked out is that if you use Firefox, it works perfectly well. So here I'm in Firefox and control V will bring it perfectly well. I really, really like it. You can even add a design here. Um, this is another thing that is from the same developer, something called Designify. So with Designify, it's kind of the same idea, but as well as just removing the background, you can choose uh, design and lots and lots of different options and 
add certain things to it for social media posts. It can be quite good, etc., etc. You can get it and download loads of stuff for free, or there is also a pricing tier where you can play per one that you download, or you can also get a subscription plan as needed. So really, really love this. It's a fantastic tool and I highly recommend you use it. Uh, so it, my name is David Ben and if you like this video, then check out my other stuff. I do weekly videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching.